he he will not be healthy and and start seventeen games. No. All right. Yeah, I agree. I'm not so if if he comes and if he well that'd be an issue. <laughs> we talk about star players all the time. Let's talk about those players who we kind of don't really see a lot of, hear a lot of, kind of fly under the radar, but make a huge impact on the team. Let's talk underappreciated players going into the 2024 season. Take it away with your first one. My first underappreciated player going into 2024. This is borderline. Should it be on this list? Should it be not? Maybe I'm cheating. I'm going to say Anthony Richardson, just because he got injured last season, his rookie season. And, but he looked all right. Like there, there were moments where it looked like, oh, this guy might be like an elite runner and athlete immediately in the NFL. Of course, injury came quickly, and that's one of the problems. Is he going to be able to navigate the injury recovery? Is he going to be able to stay healthy? And is he going to be able to consistently be a pocket quarterback as well? Because we know he just doesn't have a lot of starts under his belt in college or in the pros. That's why the injury last season hurt him, but being with Shane Steichen, if there's anyone that's going to unlock him, it's going to be Steichen. You know how much I love him as a head football coach. i not saying we should appreciate Anthony, Anthony Richardson more as a player right now because we just haven't seen enough to justify it, but I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about Indianapolis, aren't talking about Anthony Richardson, and let's remember, they're one play away from making the playoffs last season instead of the Texans with Gardner Minshew. So if Richardson is healthy and just plays solid, I think they're going to be a problem in the AFC. I think we need to keep our eye on Richardson. I'm super excited to see how he plays out this season because I was I was really loving watching Anthony Richardson play up until the injury last season. I'm going to give you my first one, and it's going to be Zach Moss for the Cincinnati Bengals. And look, uh, Joe Mixon, right, is going to be the shoes that Zach Moss is filling. He had 300 touches on average over the last three seasons. So Zach Taylor likes an offense that has a feature back. He's not too big on doing the whole 60-40 split or anything. Mm -hmm. He wants that one guy that can kind of take that workload, drive it downfield, and not get worn out, not get tired. can also provide good pass protection, which Zach Moss has been notorious for throughout his whole career. That's really what he's been used for. But, you know, last season we started to see him get some legs under him, and that made him good enough for the Bengals to look his way. Moss is also on a two-year, $8 million contract. He's going to be the starter over fifth-round pick Chase Brown. I'm tired of people saying that there's a chance that Chase Brown takes that starting position. That's not going to happen. Zach Moss is a better running back as of right now than Chase Brown. Um, If that happened, it would be way later in the season, if you ask me. Zach Moss obviously came from Indianapolis as Jonathan Taylor's backup several times because Taylor you know, was injured multiple times. Yeah. And he always backfield that position quite well. Yeah. I mean, he, he was a great guy. If you play fantasy, he was a great guy to uh, put in as a handcuff for Taylor because you knew that, you know, Indy was going to run the ball and they were going to rely on Moss if Taylor wasn't there. And he put up the numbers. I mean, there's a point in time where we we're like, wow, like Zach Moss could be a clear cut starter yeah. uh, for any NFL team. Well, now he has his chance, right? So, this is one of those guys where I don't think a lot of people are talking about him. I think he flies under the radar consistently, but I'm telling you, Zach Taylor is going to use him, whether it's for run blocking, whether because I mean he's great at run blocking, whether it's for uh, you know dump off passes or just straight up running the rock. Zach Moss is going to get his time. He's going to get his touches, and I think he's going to be really successful and kind of pull the Bengals into uh, not necessarily where Joe Mixon had him, but a great second option if Joe Burrow is under a lot of pressure in any given game. I I love this. This is a great pick. He really is underappreciated. I think he's underappreciated back in general. We saw that he had probably the best year of his career last year, arguably. Uh, He's bounced around a little bit, but he's been a a viable option for every team he's gone to, even if he's not the number one. It was time for them to move on from Mixon. I think Moss should in 24 should be better than Mixon was in 23. I hope. He gets the opportunity. I agree with you. I think he's going to be good running the football. He's going to be good in blocking. And he's going to be good catching the football out of the backfield, which should help Burrow. We'll see how the offensive line works. They should be better this year. So I'm excited to see what he does. Love that pick. One of my favorites. I'm going to go now with one of your players. I'm going to go with Khalil Shakir, the wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. Everyone 
is freaking out about Buffalo's wide receiver situation. Sound the alarm! We lost Stefan Diggs! You mean, you know, the guy that got two catches in the playoff game and dropped that big catch and he really only had like six yards in the last half of the year. What are we going to do? I think we're going to be okay. You've heard me in my bathroom with all the lights turned out too? Yes, yes. I, uh, so you found the camera? I was a little... I thought it was my wife, but... <laughs> you, you just left it. <laughs> when you came close to it that one time, I was like, this is it. The moment's up. No, uh, I think the Bills... I think they're okay at wide receiver. I know they don't have the alpha that they had with Diggs, but I don't think Diggs is an alpha anymore. They drafted Khalil Shakir in 2022, and funny enough, I had him on my fantasy team in my rookie draft. I picked him up, and I was pissed that they just refused to use him. Use him. Ken Dorsey. An understatement, but yeah. okay. I mean, he, he couldn't get on the field with Dorsey. Now, maybe he didn't deserve to be on the field. I'm not saying he, he should have been, but last year we saw what he can do. They used him as a slot receiver last year. He ended up having like 700-something yards, and more than the amount of yards he had, he made a bunch of big plays down the stretch. Like when yeah. Kansas City kind of had him held in and you needed someone to break a play open, it was Shakir. He was the guy that Allen found himself going to consistently. I think now that you have more wide receiver talent, he won't be you know, basically the only option because Diggs just wasn't available the last half of last year. Let's just call it like it is. For whatever reason, maybe it was scheme, maybe it was Diggs, I don't know. But... I think Buffalo's in good hands, and I think Shakir is going to have a better year. Maybe he doesn't have a, a huge jump in numbers, but I think he's going to continue to, li- to deliver on crucial downs because if they keep him in the slot and keep using him as that slot option for Josh Allen, I think it's clear that Allen's really comfortable for him uh, with him, and I think he's a really talented football player. No one's talking about him. Uh, I really like him, though. I like him as a receiver. I think he's going to have a... Solid, solid year. Yeah, I don't hate that. Um, I'm probably not as high on him as you are just because I've been let down by him a, a few times. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's tough being a Bills fan. I guess I, I don't look at it from the outside in. It, it's a little difficult for me to just put my hat on for Shakir and, and think that he's going to be underrated because I, I, I think he'll continue to be that very average at best rod receiver for his entire career at Buffalo. But that's just me being a pessimist about Buffalo, like I always am. Let's move on to my second guy. Man, this guy, I really love him. I really do. Lad McConkey. I love his story. You know, uh, doing some research for this show, uh, I, I looked back at his high school days, and he played pretty much every position except Waterboy on the team. The dude is super talented. He put up, like, video game numbers in high school, went, like, without even being recruited, had to go interview at five different colleges. Jacksonville State in our in, in our state, uh, Alabama, is actually one of those schools that he uh, he went to. But Georgia wound up picking him up, and that's where he really accelerated and started climbing that ladder and showed what type of receiver he could be. I think that his combine is maybe overlooked. The dude ran a four point three nine forty, like that's fast for. I'm, I mean, he's a, a white receiver. There's not a ton of white receivers that you right. can hang your hat yeah. on and say that he's great. You got Edelman. I thought you were going to dance then, around that for a second. I was like, oh, don't no, don't dance I'm around. So like yeah. it is. No, th- there's not a lot of white receivers in the NFL that are actually super talented. Right. Julian Edelman is probably one of the only ones that I, Hunter Renfro, maybe Cooper you Cup, could yeah. throw him in. Cooper Cup. Yeah. Who do I, how do I forget Cooper Cup? Hunter Renfro like two years ago. Right. Not right. Hunter Renfro sure. of recent days. Uh, but Cooper Cup obviously is probably the most glaring. Him and Julian Edelman are, have been the two best wide receiver white dudes. You see some slot guys, some white slot guys, but McConkey is more versatile than just a slot player. He's super quick. He doesn't miss a step, and he's he's arguably the best route runner out of the twenty twenty four draft in yeah. the wide receiver category. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is where Harbaugh really nailed the pick because you know there were there were chances for him to get out of this pick and not take McConkey here mm-hmm. and he didn't he actually purposely I think he traded up a pick right to get McConkey if I'm not mistaken Harbaugh saw this as an opportunity to replace Keenan Allen so Keenan Allen is a great route runner too right but he doesn't have the speed that McConkey does McConkey's faster and watching some of his highlights in Georgia man like it's just stunning what this dude can do the way he can turn on a dime uh, the way he can just lose people in a route. He's a tremendous wide receiver. I think this is a great replacement for Keenan Allen. He reminds me a lot of uh, like Deontay Johnson 
kind of his play style. But I think he's actually more dangerous than Keenan Allen was. I'm not saying he's going to be as ke- good as Keenan Allen day one, okay? So we'll pump the brakes a little bit there. But I think he is a more versatile wide receiver for Justin Herbert to throw to. Uh, especially when you look at who the wide receiving core is for the Chargers. I mean, you have him and like Quentin Johnson. You have like Josh Palmer and DJ Chark. Yeah. None of those guys really fire you up. So McConkey has an, an opportunity to be the clear cut number one. And I bet you by the end of the season, we're looking back and saying, oh, McConkey finished well above, m- maybe even in the top 10 or top 12 wide receivers on the season in the entire NFL. Yeah, a lot of people thought the Chargers might, people that don't know what they're talking about, thought the Chargers might take a receiver with their number one pick. We all knew they were going to take a lineman. That's what Harbaugh does, Jim Harbaugh. He, he wants to run the football, run, 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 play action. Run, 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 play action. Have him bite, have him bite, have him bite, then hit him over the top. He's going to take a lot of the weight off Justin Herbert. As you said, the wide receiver room is terrible. I mean, Quentin Johnson, the worst rookie season of a wide receiver in a long time, We'll see what Harbaugh can get out of him, but I love that they were able to get Lad McConkey when they did. Harbaugh actually said in an interview, uh, like after the the draft pick for the the lineman, he was like, "We we I know everybody's going to say like, why didn't you get a star player?" He said, "But we look at linemen as star players too. That's where you win and lose football games. 100% I know true. I know the fans and the draft coverage. It's all oh receivers, receivers. Having elite receivers does not win you Super Bowls. Having right. Great offensive line and defensive line that and quarterbacks. That's how you win Super Bowls. Uh, that's where the Chargers are heading. I think Ladd McConkey is going to work great in that offense. I agree. I love the pick. Last one for me. I'm going to go with another quarterback, Will Levis, for the Tennessee Titans. Two quarterbacks here. Okay. Two quarterbacks. Now, when I say he's underappreciated, with your picks, you're basically saying, I think they're going to have big years. I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm just saying I think it. I, I maybe think it's more possible than others. Will Levis showed me a lot of good things in 2023. Uh, I, I think you kind of agree with me there. He impressed. Now, yeah, he had some bad games. Down the stretch, he had some really bad games. But before that, he had some really good games, too. But remember, he's a rookie quarterback. Your rookie season is tough. There's going to be ups and downs. You know, they want you to just make it through. That's just a, a NASCAR reference. I'm a NASCAR fan. When they hire a rookie driver, a, a first-time racer goes into the Cup Series. They don't want him to win races. Their goal is to finish races. Be like, try to finish every single race. Just make it through your rookie season. Get as much experience as possible. That's what you want out of your quarterback if he's not a superstar. Obviously, you want more from Caleb Williams. Will Levis, a second-round pick. I think he gave you what you wanted from a second-round pick his first season. Had to come in maybe sooner than people wanted. And he looks really good. He's got a cannon of an arm. He makes good decisions. He's big. He can run people over. Can he operate an offense and consistently make good decisions when the pressure's on? We'll see. But I think with the talent that Tennessee has brought in, because I thought Tennessee was going to enter rebuild mode, they said no. They brought in a lot of talent. They brought in Calvin Ridley. They're pushing their chips into the middle. So if he doesn't take a step forward this season, there's no excuses. I think. Will Levis has the opportunity to impress, and I just think more people should be talking about him because it's possible he has a impressive 2024. I, I love Will Levis. I think he has been comped with Josh Allen, his play style, and and you know maybe potential abilities. I hope that he does great for the Titans. We have a couple of Titans friends, uh, Titans fan friends, and uh, those guys are usually depressed. And it'd be nice to actually see them with a smile on their face this season. Prove it or lose it, possibly. Players and coaches with the biggest prove-it seasons going into this season. Let's talk about them. Who's your first guy here? My first guy for 2024 that I'm saying you've got to prove it to me is Doug Peterson. I did my top 10 head coaches list uh, not too long ago. He was number 10. I really like Doug Peterson. I thought it was a slam dunk hire when the Jaguars got him. Looked really good his first season. But in 2023, things kind of fell apart. I don't think it's all on him. I think Trent Baalke is arguably the worst GM in the league. I think that man is atrocious. He should be fired right away. He is, I mean, he is almost like cyanide, guaranteed to kill anything he touches. That Jaguars offensive (laughs) line was terrible. We know Trevor Lawrence wasn't great, but I've gone back and watched it. I don't think, like, I can't put last season on Trevor Lawrence. Like, the guy didn't have a lot of protection. He didn't have a lot of help. We saw what he could do in 2022. Yeah, he needs to play better. But Doug Peterson needs to draw it up better, too. The offense, 
felt a little stagnant. And what have we said basically for the past two seasons of the Jacksonville Jaguars? You said it first. They are a roller coaster ride. They come out and they play great for two games and then they lose by 30 to San Francisco. And then yep. they come out and they'll beat somebody and then they'll lose by 50 to Mac Jones. It's like, what? who are you? I can't figure it out. And they'll be in a dogfight with the Eagles. They'll take the Chiefs to the wire and they'll get blown out by the Raiders or whatever. It's almost that, like they have like multiple personality disorder. Yes. Like it's, just, <laughs> it's always somebody different. Uh, it's Jim Carrey and me, myself, and Irene. It's and frustrating. Last, last year, Hank came out a lot. So <laughs> we need to get, get it back to just regular Jim Carrey coming out. I think, I, I still believe in Doug Peterson. I really do. And I don't know, again, because last year was so weird for the, for the Jaguars. I don't know how much you put on him, how much you put on Lawrence, how much you put on the GM. There's enough blame to go around. But I like to believe that they can stick together. I think Peterson did obviously clearly improve Trevor Lawrence's play from the Urban Meyer disaster. And I'm just not ready to give up on the guy. I think he'll deliver. But there's no doubt. If 2024 goes poorly for the Jaguars, Changes are coming. I guarantee you, if 2024 is bad, Doug Peterson will not be there in 2025. So that's the definition of a prove-it season. Talking about a quarterback who needs uh, to prove it this season or he actually probably will lose it, and that's none other than Daniel Jones. (sighs) He had a successful 2022 season, but since then it has just taken a nosedive after he got his four-year $160 million deal. Uh, But here's the thing. You know, a lot of people aren't talking about this where it's the Giants are actually not set up in a bad position where they could they could actually easily get out of this. Right. So uh, the contract included uh, three uh, more years and there's one year of guaranteed money left. So that means that it could actually be a lot easier for them to move on from the deal. They're not uh, totally stuck. Yeah. Right. And they also have like a bench him clause in in this or some some sort where he could actually be the. the mentor quarterback this season if they chose for that to happen. Now, the bad part is Drew Locks is backup. So uh, if you don't go with Daniel Jones, you just go with the other pile of crap. Be and careful you what you wish for. You just, well, yeah. I, and look, I agree with Rich Eisen. He said that they had buyer's remorse on Daniel Absolutely. Jones. Absolutely. 100% true. I mean, nobody is acting like that's not a thing. We all it's know real. it was a mistake. The moment they did it, it was a mistake. Let's look at these numbers. Does this scream a $45 million quarterback to you? I mean, 2019, he had the 3,000 yards, 2020, 29, 24, and 21. 2022 is the outlier season. 3,200 passing yards, 15 touchdowns, five interceptions. By the way, 15 pass touchdowns, not great. But he had 700 rushing yards, seven touchdowns, nine and six and one. That first year with Dayball, that's his best season. The other seasons, three and nine, five and nine, four and seven, one and five. Now, similar to when we talked about Jacksonville, it's not all on him. It's not. The offensive line was terrible last year. I I don't know if any quarterback could succeed in what they did last year, but when you're getting paid that money, and tell me if I'm putting words in your mouth, I think you're saying when you get paid like that, you got to deliver at some point. You have to, and it doesn't help that he's been literally the worst starting quarterback in the NFL by a long shot when it comes to like passer rating and uh, yards per attempt. Like, I mean, he's behind Zach Wilson and Ryan Tannehill in these categories. Like, yeah. that cannot happen when you've just gotten this type of contract. And I get where they're coming from back in 2022, right? You had no other option. You had to pay the guy. And for all intents and no, purposes, you didn't have to like, pay him, you, though. You didn't well, have to. I you don't know that you didn't him. have to. Possibly. But at the time, like, he had a stellar season. And I think it was just beginner luck for Dayball because I believe that was Dayball's first season it was, coming in. It was. And so, like, I, who was it, right? Chicken or the egg first? You don't know. Was it Daniel <laughs> Jones or was it just Dayball's luck? Who knows? I'm starting to lean Dayball's luck, but his luck is also tanking along with Daniel Jones. So, my point to this, though, is, like, if you don't prove it, then what? Like, what happens? Like, you move on from him, but then what? Who fills his, like, is Drew Locke going to come in here and, and backfill that? Or No, you try to draft a guy. That's why people thought they might I'm draft a guy about this like year. Mid-season. Like, what happens mid-season if you bench Daniel Jones? Like, do you just I ride wouldn't. Daniel Jones out? Yes. Really? He's better than Drew Locke. And, I, like, Drew Locke isn't awful. Like, he's really not. Like, that game he had to play uh, for Seattle last year, he led the Seahawks to a win over the Eagles. But we know he's not a consistent star starting quarterback you can't blame all of 2023 on daniel jones i'm not saying that he deserves a pass obviously he hasn't lived up to the contract no doubt but like they should have never given him the contract however 
we saw what he could do when he gets some protection. The big thing for him is he had last year, he had no protection and he had no one to throw the ball to. So they draft him elite neighbors this year. That immediately should help him a little bit. If they can just kind of protect the guy, give him some time to throw. He is an accurate passer and he is a good running quarterback, but he has to have a pocket to operate in. I just, it's so hard to really fairly judge him with when things have been so bad around him. But when you've been in the league as long as he has, like you said, there just comes a point where something has to be done. And I, I'm with you. If, if he doesn't have a season similar to 2022 this year, he won't be the quarter. This will be his last year. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. That's why it's, it's super, super important that he proves it this season because this is the season where they can easily exit the contract after the 2024 20, years up. And then going into 2025, you get your brand new quarterback and you start fresh with Brian Dayball and whoever the rookie is at that time. Problem is, the quarterback class going into 2025 right now doesn't look too spicy and uh, not not as good, far from as good as it was uh, this past season, 2024, right? So uh, you got a lot of things to weigh out here, but one thing Daniel Jones cannot do is not prove himself worthy of this contract going into 2024. Prove it. Jamison Williams, a receiver out of Alabama for the Detroit Lions, who had a lot of promise, had a lot of promise, had a great last season with uh, Alabama. I believe he was a transfer, came to Alabama, helped us, you know, got hurt in the national championship game. I digress. Sorry, still not over at Georgia fans. Anyway, he got drafted by the Lions to be that speedster, to be that guy to break the defense, but he was coming off an ACL injury. So it, you know, rookie season, most of it was recovering from that ACL he suffered in the national championship game. Then he finally comes back, and he gets popped for gambling. So then he missed six more games. Since he's come back from the gambling suspension, he just hasn't been a consistent enough player. He will have flashes like, oh, there will be a play where they'll have a deep shot to Jamison Williams. But he is supposed to be the guy that can consistently take the top off of the defense that Jared Goff and Detroit can rely on to keep those safeties honest. You know what I mean? And... So far, he hasn't been that guy. So far, he hasn't even been on the field consistently enough to be that guy. Again, a poor start to someone's NFL campaign, trying to recover from an ACL, then getting hit with a a gambling suspension, all of that. He's a talented player, and I like him, but when all of these receivers are coming in and popping right away, we've got more receiver talent than ever before in the history of the league. Like, I mean, we're getting five to eight good receivers in the draft every single year. At a certain point, you got to put up or shut up. I think this is it for Jamison Williams. If he wants to get a second contract, if he wants to prove that he can be a staple for Detroit, he's got to do it this year. Um, excuses beside, you've, you've got to the point to where you've got to deliver. You've got to be uh, that deep threat for Jared Goff. Jamison Williams, prove it to me. Running back Najee Harris is entering into a prove-it season. He is literally playing for a contract after Pittsburgh declined his fifth-year option, which kind of confused me a little bit, but... Whatever, that's what it is. And he's got a new OC coming in, Arthur Smith, who really did wonders with Derrick Henry, the other Alabama running back, by the way, uh, in in Tennessee. So he's already proved himself there. Can he do it with Najee Harris? That's a question to be answered. A lot of people say that if there's a second Derrick Henry, as far as build goes, it's Najee Harris. I don't fully agree with that, but I do believe that Arthur Smith can make him better. It's not that Najee's been bad. I mean, he's had like 1,000-yard seasons pretty much every year, but it it has been declining. And that's the issue is, you know, back when Ben was there, right, his first year in the season, uh, Ben was kind of washed. And so like he had dump off passes consistently to Najee Harris. And that was a big part of Najee's game, even though he didn't turn it into big plays most of the time. I mean, the dude calls caught like a billion passes from Ben. So once Ben left, it trailed off. And now Najee's just been on a decline since then. And I think that's part of the reason they maybe declined his fifth-year option is just because like they don't know what he's going to be this season. I hope that he does great. Uh, he's dropped weight in the offseason, so that's going to help him. And with Arthur Smith uh, kind of coaching him up and coaching him through how to play and how to uh, – look, you can get handed the ball 150 times, but if you keep running into a brick wall, it doesn't help. You can have all the possessions you want. But until you learn how to kind of like break in between those tackles like he kind of did in college at Alabama, uh, he's going to struggle to earn that contract and get Pittsburgh to re-sign him or anybody. By the way, the running back market is declining anyway as far as pay goes. 
So, like, you have everything to fight for this season. Prove it to me, Najee. I, I agree with you. Just to quick pinpoint, I think the thing that accelerated that was Jalen Warren's performance as the backup. The fact that they've been able to rely so much as Jalen Warren. And yep. even though Najee's numbers look good, like 1,000 yards every year, 4.1 a carry last year, when you watch him, there's so many carries that just seem like they amount to nothing. It seems like you've almost got to break one. And when you compare him to Jalen Warren, Warren has looked like the better back. So when there's so many running backs out there, you just got to do more if you want to be the bell cow. Last one for me, prove it. This guy should be on everybody's list. Justin Herbert. I believe, okay? Baby, I believe in you. But I think this is it. Because similar to what I said with uh, Jamison Williams, there's no more excuses, okay? Justin Herbert has had awful head coaches. Brandon Staley was a terrible, a terrible football coach. But there was a time where people were talking about Justin Herbert being right behind Burrow and Allen. Like they were ranking him number four, best quarterback in the league. He has the physical abilities. Absolutely. He is talented enough to be that quarterback, but he just hasn't taken his game to the next level where we've seen these other quarterbacks come in and start great and then elevate. Justin Herbert is still playing at the same level he was playing his rookie season, which was great. But you know what I mean? Joe Burrow played great his rookie season and then was better his second year, better his third year. Josh Allen, same thing, better, better. Justin Herbert came in, was great, and just has kind of stayed at that level. He hasn't really improved. I think a lot of that is coaching, but we have to see something out of him. Not that, obviously, he's got his contract. He's going to be the quarterback there for a long time. He's not going to lose his job. But as far as being ranked amongst the amongst the legit greats in the league, if you want to be considered a top five, top six quarterback, if you want to scare teams, you've got to show me that you can deliver, deliver consistently, and deliver in the playoffs. And now that you've got uh, Jim Harbaugh coming to be your head coach, we know Harbaugh is a great football coach. He's proven it everywhere he went. If Herbert can't get it done now, uh, he's never going to get it done. I believe he will. I think most people believe so, but there's no excuses after this year. Herbert's got to prove it to us. I'm pulling the car up here, and I'm going to park for just a minute, a little bit longer than I did on Najee and Daniel Jones, and we're going to talk about Brian Burns for just a minute. Joe Sheen, the GM of the Giants, with his boldest move yet, made made a trade for Brian Burns, five-year contract, $141 million, makes him the third highest paid edge rusher in the league. Here's my dilemma. And he's really got to prove it to me, too, by the way. It's not just prove it in general. This is prove it to me. Because when you think of tier one, highest tiered edge rushers in the league, who do you think of? Highest tier edge rushers. My first one, I think TJ Watt. Um, I think Bosa in San Francisco. Miles Garrett, Micah Parsons, Mats Crosby. Yeah, Brian Burns is not at the top of the list for me. He was outside the top 25 in sacks in 2023. He was 53rd in pressures per game in 2023. He was 59th in run defense category in 2023. How is this top tier status and you get top tier money? It does not make sense. I'm very frustrated about it. You can't not tell. It's insane that they paid him this much money for his type of talent. He has to prove it. He's going to be teaming up with, you know, rising star Kayvon Thibodeau, and then he's going to have uh, Bobby Okereke on the other side, and they're trying to beef up this front seven. I get it. I get what they're trying to do. But for this kind of money, yeah. I think it's a bad deal. I think that if you look at a team that is really bad in the, in, the, in the front office, it is none other than the Giants. They are terrible. They throw money out left and right, and then they play catch up for the rest of the season for the next four years, you know? And it just, it, it completely baffles me how they can go from a bad decision with Daniel Jones, which I know they didn't know at the time, but now they do. And now this year, they make that type of move with Brian Burns, who honestly is probably outside the top 10 in edge yeah. rushers and is getting paid third highest. Absolutely. T- tell me where this makes sense. Now, final rant and little side tangent here. <sighs> what is the va- They're beefing up the front seven, right? Like, obviously, you-, you can see that they're doing that. And you and I have always said that, like, you know, the the trenches is where games are won and lost. But when it comes to defensive line and the defensive front seven, the NFL is continuously evaluating and adding protection to the quarterback position, right? So is this as valuable as it once was? Like, is beefing up your front seven on defense a smart thing to do with this type of money now? Because, like, now you have such a protected player 
pretty much playing in a bubble almost, almost. Like, is it that important that you beef up that front seven as much as you used to, say, you know, 10 years ago? That, that's actually a really good question. And that's, we could spend 25 minutes talking about that. Short answer, yes. Because in the playoffs, it matters. You win playoff games by having good players in the trenches. In the regular season, if you're the Giants, do the Giants go where they need to go with or whether they add Brian Burns or not, I, I don't know if he makes that much of an impact just as far as where they at. However, I think edge rushers are those guys. I think you have to have top tier edge rushers. You have to have, if not top tier, really good edge rushers you can count on. I think edge rushers are more important than your defensive interior. We've seen there, there's not a ton of interior D line greats. You know what I mean? There's a lot of really good guys, but there's yeah. not a ton of elite D linemen like D tackles, nose tackles. There are a lot of really great edge rushers. I think it's important to have those. So I do I do still think it's important, but more so in the postseason with the interior. I think it's important year round to have the edge rushers. Yep. But but as you Completely said, agree. It, you agree? Yeah, I do. I do. And and but the the point to me is like it's not that Brian Burns isn't an, a really good edge rusher, right? He's just the, the point that I'm making is he's way overpaid. Is he 28 million a his, year? Yeah, <laughs> for his talent, you know, like it, he's the third highest paid guy. He and and there's you know eight guys I can name off that's better than him, more talented than him. So that's why he's got to prove it to me. He's obviously got to prove it to the Giants and the Giants fans. I hope this works out great. I love Thibodeau, and I think that I you too. know have having the dual edge rushers like that, you know, sandwiched on on, on the bookends of either side of the line is killer good like uh, right. you almost have to have that now I, I i completely agree i think brian burns in 2022 was at was at his peak and that's when the rams offered carolina the two first round picks to trade for him they didn't do it they traded him this time or and he moves and gets signed with the giants the the question for brian burns we've seen the athleticism we've seen the ability there is he being held back by the panthers and he just needs to go somewhere and be unleashed but then it's like yeah, are you gonna be able to do that the giants I don't know. I, I think he's really good. I do agree he's overpaid. And I kind of agree with you. If he wants to be considered in that upper echelon of edge rushers where he's getting paid, he's got to make something happen. He's got to prove it this year. All right, Ryan, I saw a couple other people doing this online, and I just wanted to do it because it seemed fun. We're going to do a quarterback draft, going back and forth, picking who we would take as a quarterback. If you were the GM of a team, you're picking any quarterback from the lot to be your guy. We're going to go back and forth until we get to 16. So. Uh, we're each picking eight, basically kind of be our top 16 quarterbacks, including age and all that. However, we see fit. It'll be fun. I'll go first without further ado. I think it starts off relatively easy. Number one pick in the quarterback draft has to be Patrick Mahomes. He is already an all time great. There's nothing I can say about him. We haven't already said he's number one on the list easily. Yeah, number two, uh, I'm going to go Josh Allen here as my first pick. And it's not just because I'm a Bills fan, but it's really because I'm a Bills fan. And I think that Josh Allen is, we've talked about him a ton too, but uh, just as far as being on the team and being that guy that you have confidence in, I think he could be that guy. I just think he would be a much better guy with a different head coach. I agree with you. I think those are the easy ones. Uh, Mahomes and Allen, that's exactly where I would go. The third one is interesting. Yes, it is. Because it was an easy pick, but I'm starting to get worried about the injuries. However... If I was starting my team, he would still be right here at number three. He'd be my next call. You took Allen. I would want Joe Burrow. I am worried about the injuries. We can't ignore it at this point. It's something we have to consider, something we have to talk about. But when he's on the field, which has been more than he's not, he is the second, the best quarterback in the National Football League. What I love about him is he plays quarterback the way it used to be played. He plays quarterback from the pocket. And he just... Joe Burrow is death by a thousand cuts. And I know you've experienced this as well, being a Bills fan when y'all played them. It's just like, oh, back to pass three yards, back to pass four yards, seven yards, six yards. And it's two quarters of that. You're like, can we ever stop him? Like, it doesn't matter how good a defense you play. He's going to find something. We were there for that AFC championship game in Arrowhead that uh, Kansas City blew the lead. And in the second half, Kansas City's defense just couldn't stop him. Don't matter how good they play. And he's slippery. He's sneaky at escaping pressures, escaping sacks. He's an incredible quarterback, and I hope he can stay healthy because the league is better when he's in it. He's uh, who I would pick next. Yeah, I'm going to go Lamar Jackson here. and I love that. I, I'll tell you why, because not only do you have the legs, right, that we all know that is terrific, but Lamar's 
arm talent has gotten so much better just this last season, really. And it's shown that he's actually a quarterback of multiple talents. He's not just a one-hit wonder, run on the ground, escape the pocket, do wild things. Like He can actually play tried and true X's and O's football. And that's what I really like about him. And, you know, just after this season, seeing how far he can take a team and he can actually carry the team, like, honestly, carry a team. I love Lamar Jackson. I put him over Jalen Hurts, mainly because Jalen Hurts, the way he ended last season is just, it's hard to blot that out of my memory. I'm surprised you would have Hurts this high. So he's going to still be available to you in a minute if you want him. Uh, To piggyback off of what you said about Lamar real quick, I agree. I I think we've known that about his passing, but anybody that was still a doubter has been silent. Even the late doubters of Lamar, you can't say anything. The man is an excellent passer. He's an excellent runner. He can kill you any way uh, way he wants to, really. Uh, The the knock for Lamar is he had been hurt 2022, 2021. He had been hurt both seasons. That's what what we said going into last year. We said, we need to see him be healthy a whole season. And what did he do? He went out and won NFL MVP and was in the AFC Championship game. He's still in his prime. Lamar Jackson is arguably the most dynamic quarterback in the league. I love that pick. Number five, my pick now, is easy for me. This is, Again, these picks are easy. I might have even taken him four. Give me my boy C.J. Stroud from Houston. Ooh. I, I think okay. he is already one of the top five best quarterbacks in the league. Now, obviously, you can't really know until you see it again because your rookie season, a lot of teams aren't expecting. You're catching people off guard. But the way he played, he's one of those guys, man, he just doesn't make many bad decisions at all. And I will never forget, me and you, we were in Kansas City when that Georgia Ohio State playoff game happened, and we were supposed to leave, we had a dinner reservation, and we were glued to the hotel beds watching CJ Stroud's performance in that game because we were our jaw dropped. Yeah, we couldn't believe it. And I, we said that night, we're like, if he can do it against Georgia, he can do it in the NFL. Uh, and he absolutely has. I love watching him play. He makes t- so many good decisions and so many throws that you just can't believe. He puts on the money. It's like he hands the ball to him. C.J. Stroud's my next pick. My next pick here, I know I just talked about Jalen Hurts being here, but looking at the list, man, and I know the guy's older. And this is actually, if it, I don't know if you caught the latest interview with C.J. Stroud, but this is actually his favorite quarterback, uh, a favorite mm-hmm. quarterback to watch, and that's none other than old Matty Stafford, man. Damn it. I was I'm hoping I'd have him next pick. <laughs> no, you will not. I'm not letting him fall past my grasp here at – uh, this pick, I, I think that Stafford, even though you may only have two to three years left, or maybe even longer, we look at what Tom Brady did, even though I think he's an anomaly. But Matt Stafford, uh, his no look passes, that's what CJ Stroud kind of credited to him. He's like, I, I love watching Patrick Mahomes because he does things that like you can't write scripts for, you can't teach that. He said, but Stafford is where he got the no look passes from and just his ability to, to kind of throw defenders off. C.J. Stroud credited Matt Stafford yeah, to a lot yeah. of that, and so that that made me kind of reevaluate my my pick here and go with Stafford instead of Hurts. So every time you watch him, every time you watch Matt Stafford play, you're like, "Holy shit, dude!" dude. He played through a broken what was it collarbone or oh. arm or something. He's one of the toughest quarterbacks of all time. Remember in the game against Detroit last year when he got hit, and you could tell by the camera he got knocked out. Like he was yeah. out cold, his eyes were crossed out, and he came to. And got up holding his chest so they wouldn't pull him out of the game. <laughs> That's exactly right. He's a tough son of a bitch. He makes every throw in the book. You, you, Every time you watch a Matt Stafford game, there's a, there's two or three, oh my God, throws. He is awesome. He reminds you He's every awesome. time you watch him of why he is one of the best. I'm so glad he went to the Rams because it, now we all are appreciating him properly because even I underappreciated him. Now that Stafford's off the list, it becomes interesting I could go a lot of different ways here, but there's one guy I want, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Justin Herbert. I'm gonna take Herbert. I, okay. We talked about in our prove it segment. He's got to prove it this year, but w- we've seen. I mean, we know the physical ability is there. He's got a great arm. He makes decisions. He can make every throw. I wish he used his legs more because you go back and watch his tape at Oregon. He ran a lot. He scrambled a lot. I don't. I don't need him to take off. All the time. I don't need him to be Jalen Hurts or, you know, Kyler Murray, but I do want to see him use his legs and get yards because there's times where he rolls right 
and he's got room to run. He's a big guy. He can run over a couple people. You don't have to be Josh Allen. I just want to see him utilize that part of his game. But without a doubt, if I'm getting to pick my quarterback for my team at this point, I I can't let him slip any further. Most people would probably say it's blasphemy that we let him get this low. But, uh, you know, hasn't quite lived up to potential. But the talent is there. No doubt that he's a great quarterback. It's our list. I don't really care. And Good that point. also opens the door for me to put Jalen Hurts here. I can't let him slip another position down. I uh, can't let you get him next because I think you may actually have of, of, of these two uh, that, that I'm going for. But Jalen Hurts is where I'm going. Uh, he's proven that he can uh, be a terrific quarterback. He can use his legs well. But I think last season he got caught up in using his legs too much. And mm-hmm. he tried to put the game on his back. And they also went off the run game. That was a, a really big problem for the Eagles last year. They kind of abandoned that and just said, you know what, Jalen, like, go on, Jalen. Let's go just on, do, and his defense do your sucked. thing. Well, yeah, that too. That that doesn't help anything. But it doesn't. I think Jalen Hurts, uh, this late in the picks, he's definitely uh, – people are going to be mad that we probably let him fall this far. Uh, you know, in some of these lists I've been looking at, he's top – five and well, I just I, I don't see that but no because here's the thing and I, we've talked about it I'm sorry but this this is where it boils down to for Hertz he's great I love him but last year wasn't as good as 2022 what I want to know and I, I don't know this yet did Shane Steichen get all there what is did Shane Steichen just get the most out of him and no one's ever going to get that out of him was that an anomaly or is that the level he can play at consistently if he has a good to great offensive coordinator or is that just what he looks like when you pair him with a genius like I like I think Shane Steichen is. I think Steichen's a wizard. I don't know if Hurts will ever look like that again. So if he doesn't, he's still a really good quarterback, but right. he's not a top five for me unless he can re- uh, duplicate that level of play. So we'll see. Uh, I still like him, though, and I agree with you. I would not have taken him over my next guy, though, personally, just because I'm biased and I like this guy a lot. Maybe I'm wrong. Give me Jordan Love, quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. I know. I know he made a mistake at the end of... The, the Yeah, the divisional game last year against the 49ers, you're like, oh, why'd you make that throw? But before that, the guy played almost perfect in the playoffs. He brought Green Bay back. He really understood Matt LaFleur's offense. He shined. We see the Rodgers in him, you know, from sitting behind Rodgers. We all thought no, no chance after sitting that many years he's going to come out and do it again. It can't happen. And he really impressed the second half of this year. And that's what impressed me the most. It started out really rocky. He battled through adversity and became one of the most fun quarterbacks to watch. I don't know where it goes from here, but right now, the future's bright, and I just love watching Jordan Love play. Ooh, this is where it gets really, really dicey. Yeah. Uh, right here at number 10, I got to take my boy Jared Goff. I right? like it. And I look, he's proven that he can play football and play it to a high level and you know actually take a team further than you than you thought he's one of the most accurate passers in the league and i think that gets overlooked a lot right like he doesn't make a ton of mistakes and the mistakes he makes now they're they're god awful but uh when he's not making mistakes which is most of the time uh, he's a fantastic quarterback now he's stuck in mud he cannot move but he didn't really have to you know like yeah. uh, he can he he can dissect that defense better than any of them i mean he's just he's really really come a long way uh, going to the Lions and playing for Dan Campbell. So I got to go Jared Goff here over all the rest of these guys. I I agree. That's where I would have gone. I'm surprised that, I mean, he's played his best football with Dan Campbell, which is surprising uh, instead of Sean McVay. But he has. I love him. No doubt to me that uh, he's a top 10 quarterback. That's where he lands. At number 11, for my pick, I could go a couple different directions here. Oh, man. And I'm telling you, this is where it gets really difficult. Yeah, this is tough. I'm I'm torn between two guys, but I'm going to go with Dak Prescott. I know we give him a lot of grief, but the bottom line, and this is what the narrative is, oh, he's he's excellent in the regular season. He's bad in the playoffs. That has been true, but hey, his defense can help him. I mean, his defense, the, the great Dallas defense, did let Jordan Love put 45 on him, okay? Yeah. So, oh, sorry. And Dak Prescott, you know, did kind of get them back in that football game to an extent. Sorry that he struggled in the beginning and he looked up and they were down 30. You know, that's not all on him. I think that's one of the things we we look at their playoff games and because his playoff games most of the time haven't been good, we're like, oh, uh, Dak Prescott can't do it in the playoffs. It's like, okay, but the rest of the team collapsed around him too. And if you put him 
with a Matt LaFleur. Like if he was in Jordan Love's situa- situation, I think he absolutely could win a Super Bowl. I think he's talented enough. So he's right there outside the top 10 for me. Number 12 for me, Brock Purdy. I got to go with him, yep. man, because it's just, uh, he's the obvious choice here, I think. And look, I've given the guy a lot of grief and I still don't think he is a top 10 quarterback. Obviously why I'm picking up number 12. Uh, but I think that he is capable of going to that level. I just haven't seen it yet. I want to see it. I saw it at what the fourth quarter of the of the playoff game. Like you know, he he kind of won the Gets game. Against the Lions, there. yeah, yeah, he won the game. And kudos to him, great. But can he do that all the time? And because there's quarterbacks out there in in the top ten, there's ten of them at least that can do that consistently. And uh, I, I need to see that from Brock Purdy before I move him up any higher. But from all the guys left. He's definitely the clear-cut choice here. I love Brock Purdy. I really do. I, as much grief as I give him, I still actually really like the guy. Uh, and I also love him just in the personal life, too. But fantastic quarterback. He's, he's perfect in the Shanahan offense. All right, next up for me, I'm surprised we let him go this low, but 2023 was rough. There's questions around him. I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence. I think he's still very talented. I think the best is yet to come. I don't know. I, I still believe. Maybe I'm... Stupid. I don't think all the problems last year were him. I like Trevor Lawrence. He looks like uh, the quarterback you'd build in a lab. I, I, I'm honestly kind of mad at myself. I let him go this low, but I'm taking him now. So, so number 14, right? I got number 14. That's here. correct. Uh, I'm going to go. This is so difficult because there's two guys here. One guy, um, if it wasn't for the injury last year, I would take him, but I got to go Tua right here. Uh, Tua's proven that he's actually gotten a lot smarter. He's taken jiu-jitsu classes to avoid injuries and learn how to fall, and he's done all these things. He's he's lost weight this offseason, so um, he, he's That's good. hopefully going to be a little bit quicker than he was, uh, but he is dynamic when it comes to the passing game, right? I mean, you know that he can slant those balls the best. Uh, best better than anybody slant he throws those one of the, balls he can slant those balls man he throws one of the best slants of, of any quarterback in the league that should be dolphins t-shirts it should literally they should have t-shirts that say slant those balls slant those balls to a uh yeah, but look the guy is is an awesome quarterback when it comes to the short range mid range he's got to work on that deep ball he'll never yeah. actually get there if you ask me like, i don't mm-hmm. think he'll ever have that perfect deep ball i, I think as it stands right now and these guys left i think two is my best shot going forward if I'm putting a, a quarterback in. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I don't don't know if I would have taken him, but I, we've, we've definitely seen that he's a talented quarterback. I'm torn here because there's the injury. The injury worries me. It, it really worries me if I was going to. But yeah, out, of so good, guys, right? out of these guys, out of these guys, we might be talking about different guys. I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that's who I was talking okay. about. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was my choice uh, last pick. So All right. uh, it, was, it was Tua and Rodgers I was trying to decide between. Now. Do I think a 40-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles is going to be great? <laughs> no. Saying it out loud I don't. is painful. Right. It's, That's the thing. People think, because Brady did it, now everybody's going to do it. It's not going to happen. And by the way, dude, his last season with Green Bay was average. It was average. I cannot, cannot stress this enough. When you hurt one Achilles, there's a 50% chance you hurt the second one. Correct. Now, times that by the age of you being 40. Right. The percentages are not in your favor. However, I do, and maybe this is dumb, I kind of do believe that Aaron Rodgers has that I'll show you mentality. I mean, Mm -hmm. when they drafted Jordan Love, the dude won back-to-back MVPs. So I think if there's anything left, I'm not... I don't know what he's going to do this year, but in this case, if we've we've already gotten to number fifteen, I've got to pick somebody. I if I'm the GM, I'd rather roll the dice on Aaron Rodgers before any of the guys left. That's just me personally. I'm not saying he'll have a great year. Pick sixteen, you didn't take him. I was hoping you wouldn't, and I, I'm rolling the dice here, man, because it's my team. And I can do what I want. Caleb Williams is where I'm going at sixteen. Yeah, I thought about I it. I haven't even seen him play, but as as much as he's been talked up, hyped up, and put up on a pedestal as one of the greatest. Uh, you know, uh, quarterbacks that come out of a draft in, you know, 38 years. Like, this dude should be good. I'm going to risk rolling the dice on him and pick Caleb Williams here at number 16. He's my last pick of the draft. And I think that what he's shown me in college, if he can duplicate that like C.J. Stroud did, um, even, you know, 80% of what he did in college, he would still be a terrific quarterback and worthy of being in a top 16 draft. Looking back, I kind of overlooked him. I probably. Looking back, if I could redo, I would probably take him at 11 when I took Dak. 
if I was being GM, I was, if I was really operating because it's just yeah. just because he's a the rookie and, and the talent. Yeah. Like, but I like it. I like that he went 16. So that's our list: Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Lamar, Stroud, Stafford, Herbert, Hertz, Love, Goff, Dak, Purdy, Lawrence, Tua, Rogers, and Caleb Williams. Dude, we got a lot of good quarterbacks in the league. Oh man, it's going to be a great season, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm literally so excited. Does, like I'm just counting does, the days. Does Aaron Rodgers finish this season? Fully healthy and miss no games. No, he he does not play seventeen games. Okay, D- no, maybe not, maybe not he count just sitting healthy. out because like playoffs or something. You're just saying no, no, like no. for health reasons he won't play seventeen games. He he will not be healthy and and start seventeen games. No, all right, yeah, I agree. I'm not so if if he comes and if he well that'd be an issue if he comes back and starts seventeen games. I will genuinely be surprised, but I'm rooting for him because I just want to see good quarterbacks play football. I think I think we'll see a lot of shotgun from Aaron Rodgers because you don't have as much pressure on on those uh, heels when you when you have oh. to drop back from shotgun or uh, from uh, under center. So uh, just look out for a lot of shotgun snaps from Aaron Rodgers this it, season. But it, it's all going to come down to the offensive line. I mean, that's it. They, they have addressed it, but they've addressed it with older guys that have been injured in the past. They drafted one, but we'll see if the offensive line holds up. He might can be okay, but it all it all comes down to that. We'll see. I can't wait. For the season, next time we get together, we'll talk some Justin Jefferson. We'll talk some Jared Goff. Thank you all for listening. See you guys later. Goodbye.